Hello, I'm sorry. I the call came in. I had to try to get off again. I'm going to give a few minutes so that people can come back. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Thanks for joining me again. I want to give you a few minutes so that uh, we can take that again. So I will take aquaponics again. I said in aquaponics, what we have is instead of just having your nutrient reservoir alone, what we, instead of that, we are going to have fishes in the nutrient reservoir so that the waste product of the fish is what we are going to use to feed the plants. Now, how that works is, remember that the basic waste product of fish is urea. That, and urea is basically ammonia. So what we have then is, the waste product which is not inside the water, remember if you have people that rear fishes, they will tell you, for catfish, for example, once they are matured, every three days you have to change your water. But when you have plants feeding off that water, you don't have to change the water so often. If you've ever had the opportunity of going to maybe a stream, you realize that the cleanest part of the stream, of the water in the stream, is usually where you have plants growing. So it's the same thing we are trying to mimic here. Wherever it is that, so once you have your plants on the system, the plant is able to help clean the water such that the water doesn't have to be replaced so often. Okay. So we've talked about the time. So today we'll be focusing on hydroponics. We will be focusing on hydroponics. Now, planting materials. In starting off your system, you need plants to plant. I mean, you need something to grow. There are two basic ways to get your plants, either from seeds or from clones. So it's either you are going to get a clone, meaning our teachers have will do cloning, or you start from a seed. If you are starting from a seed, it is important you know the kind of seed you have. Is it an organic seed or is it a hybrid seed or is it a GMO seed? What kind of seed do you have access to? This is extremely important. Is it an organic seed? If it is an organic seed, most of the time you could be written organic. Take for instance, I don't know if you can see this. This is a tomato seed and I know it is organic because it is written that the seed is organic. Now, whatever kind of seed that you are getting to start with, it is also important you know the characteristics of the seed. I don't, I don't need this to be so clear, but you notice that on this, the growing tips are written. I'm trying to square, place it well. The growing tips are written. Now, it is important that you get directions for how to grow whatever seed you are getting from anywhere. If you are getting farm talk, good morning, ma. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us, ma. Anywhere you are getting seed from, it is important you know what are the characteristics or the conditions necessary for this seed to grow. So your seed could be organic. Organic by uh, dictionary definition means it is a natural seed, no chemical pesticide or any manipulation, or it could be an hybrid. Now, an hybrid seed is a seed that has been naturally crossed to give a specific trait. I will look, let me use an example that will probably uh, understand. I am not a dog freak, but I know if, for example, I know there is a dog they call Rottweiler, and I think there is another dog they call German Shepherd. I hope they are not saying dog with different names. Now, I can decide and say, I want a dog that has the characteristics of Rottweiler and the German Shepherd. So, if I allow both of them to mate, the child they are going to give birth to, the puppy they are going to have, is going to be an hybrid of these two. I don't know if that makes sense. So the child they are going to give birth to will be an hybrid of these two. We do the same thing with plants. So if we have, for example, if, for example, the, my neighbor has, maybe I have an orange plant, my neighbor also has an orange plant, 
However, my own orange plant is usually small in size, but very sweet. My neighbor's orange plant is usually very big in size, but not so sweet. Not so sweet. I can decide that I want a hybrid of these two oranges such that I am going to get take a characteristic from my neighbor which is big and I retain my original characteristics which is sweet. So the seed that I am going to be getting from this union, the seed I am going to be getting from that union to replant is called a hybrid. So it is important that you know the kind of seed you have access to. If it is a hybrid, for most reputable companies, they will tell you the characteristics of the seed so that you know what hybrid that you are getting. For some, the hybrid could be maybe it is drought resistant, maybe it grows big, maybe it is sweeter, whatever it is. However, it is important to also note that when you get a hybrid seed and you plant, so if I get this hybrid seed, this is called the first filial generation, when I plant and I get seed from this, the F2 generation, when I plant and I get seed from this, the second generation of seed now, when I replant this second generation of seed, I am not going to get the same characteristics that I got from the first. I think that makes sense. Because by the time you replant it, what I am going to get back from the second generation, it would either be small and sweet or big and not so sweet it will reverse back to one of the parents. Which is why, for hybrid, you always have to go back to the source to get new set of seeds. For organic, you don't need that. Now, in the case of GMO, hybrid, you did it without so much, uh, you did not manipulate at the gene level of the plant. In GMO, you do manipulations at the gene level. So, it is important you know what kind of seed am I getting. One. Two, you, for us to do an assignment, for an assignment, we'll try to work on us getting seeds on our own. So we will use tomato seeds. So we will use tomato seeds. So assignment number two is get tomato seed. How do you get tomato seed? Very simple. Go to the market, buy regular tomato. You just need one ball. When you get the tomatoes, cough it open. Try to extract the seed. Try to bring out the seed. You might look for tomatoes that is a bit soft, so it is easy to open. Bring out the seed. Wash. When you wash, wash, wash. Right? When I say wash, rinse, not with soap. Rinse with water so that you have all of the seed out. Then dry it out. Don't dry under direct sunlight. Put in a cool, airy place. Once you do that in like 3-4 days, it should be totally dried out. You have gotten your seed. You have gotten your seed. The next thing would be to do a nursery. The next thing would be to do a nursery. Remember, I am trying to make this as basic as possible. To do your nursery, get something like paper towel or tissue, anything that, something like this that you know you can moist easily. Get the seed, wet this first, let it be moist. Put the seed inside cover. So close it up. Get a Ziploc bag, put it inside and close up. In three to seven days, it will have started germinating. Now, the reason of putting it in the Ziploc bag, keep also in a cool place, not directly under sunlight. The reason of keeping it in a Ziploc bag is, one, we are able to lock the moisture in. The reason why the seed was covered is because your tomato seed does not bring dormancy in, in the presence of light. Hence, we are trying to create a dark environment. I hope that makes sense. So that is option one. Option two is through what we call cloning. So I am going to explain to us how we do cloning. I'm trying to make, uh, I want to focus on the table, okay. okay. I hope we can see the table properly. 
uh, let me move these close close I want to show cloning that's what I'm doing okay I think this is clear now cloning is very simple the plant I will be using this morning is yam the plant I will be using this morning is yam so let me take so let's look for a very long wood. So, okay, I think you're not seeing what I'm doing. This is a yam plant. I'm trying to get it out from the substrate. I'm trying to get it out from the substrate. So, in here, I have my yam plants, or oh, they are intertwined. Just a minute. Okay. So, I have my yam plants. Now, how do we do cloning? If you look at this plant, now, in cloning, what we want to do is we want to replicate this plant. The advantage of cloning is whatever characteristics my parent plants have, will be the exact characteristics my clone is going to have. It's like you are photocopying. So it is exactly the same. Now, if you look at this plant, you notice at this point there is a node or a, a leaf is coming out. At this point, another leaf is coming out. At this point, another leaf is coming out. Hello? Now, everywhere a leaf is coming out in the plant is called a node everywhere a leaf is coming out on the plant is called a node so if I cut this single node if I cut this node and I put it inside any substrate a node has the ability or the capacity to regenerate a full plant a single node has the capacity or ability to regenerate a full plant which means from this single node, I can get back roots and I can get back shoot system. So, normally look for something sharp to do this cutting. I will be using a surgical blade. I will be using surgical blade. You can use a sharp scissors. So, if I take this, I don't know if we can see this well. Mm, let me see if I put a plain paper at the background. Then if that would help. I don't know if this is better with a plain paper at the background. So I am going to cut. So if I cut, now take note that at the top part, when I want to cut the top, I am going to cut straight. When I want to cut the top, I am going to cut straight. So a sharp straight cut. So I have a sharp straight cut. It may not be so obvious here, but what I have is a sharp straight cut. Now, when I want now the, the distance between the node and the top cutting is always very, very tiny. As much as you can maybe about 0 0.5 centimeter from the top. Now to cut from the bottom, I am going to do about two centimeters down I am going to slant the lower cutting why am I slanting the lower cutting because I want to increase the surface area for absorption of food so for example this is yam you can see let me show you this is how I did this for this is how this came about. So this is root plug that I am using. I will still give you the ones you will try. So this is an unused root plug. So all I need to do at this point is put this in there. In planting, you must ensure that this node, you must ensure that your node is inside your substrate, is buried inside your substrate. So once you do that like this, I am done with planting. So we are going to look at an example doing hydroponics, using hydroponics. 
So here I have a transparent container so that nobody will be wondering, ah, what kind of water is it? This is regular water. I'm not trying to do their advert, but at least it's water that we are used to. I'm sure we have an idea of who this is. So I'm opening. It is totally sealed. Open. And I pour the water in to the container I want to use. Put the water in. This is just what I use for teaching. So you can use any container. Now if you look at it with this container, this is acting. Remember we said that loamy soil has three functions. To support the plant, one, provide support, two, for aeration, three, water retention. Because we already have water, water is automatically retained. The second function we said is for aeration. Because there are holes in this my basket, air can, trust, can go in and out easily while the basket itself acts as support. So let's cut. Because I want to plant in a system with water, I am going to cut two nodes. So this is one. And again, slant the lower cutting. This is two. So, when we remember the meaning of two nodes, there is the upper node, this is the upper node, this is the lower node. I'm trying to uh, ensure I'm inside, I'm focused on the camera. So, upper node, lower node. You cut in the direction of how the plant grows naturally. Now, remember, because I want to do hydroponics, I am going to cut off the leaf of the lower node. So I go to my lower node, I cut off the leaf without cutting off the node. What I mean by without cutting off the node, if you look at this, I hope it's a bit clear, you notice the node itself is still there. I did not remove the node, I only removed the leaf. So when I want to plant this, I am going to take this because I already have little holes bored in. So take you through your system. So I have this and bam, I am done with planting. So you realize the node that is inside the water is where my future root is going to come out from. The node in the water is where my future root would come out from. The node above the water is where my future shoot would come out from. I will um, give continual updates on social media so you see what happens to the plant to see how it works. So basically, that is what soilless grain is all about. I hope it is simple to understand. It is very simple. If you want to use substrate, all you need to do is we'll go out now, do a little practical with the substrate. So the other things you need to monitor, like I said, you need to know the pH. So you can get a pH meter. If you are using a substrate medium, you get a pH meter that looks like this. If you are using liquid medium, then you get a pH meter that looks like this. That looks like this. So we are going to do a little bit of planting. You give me a few minutes, I have to do the setup. We'll do a little bit of planting so we would understand all I have been explaining. Then, once you do your assignment, remember we said get substrate, do your tomato seed nursery, transplant to the system. Once you do your assignment, I would give you, the first person to get it correctly will get a set of vertical grow planters and rock wood from me for free. And rock wood from me for free. So... I'm trying to go out. So this is a vertical growth system. So what I want us to do is, I'm going to set up a system now in your presence.
so sorry, I'm trying to bring the things out. So remember what I explained earlier when we were talking? I said this is cocoa coin. So you can see how it looks like a block. So together we are going to turn it from a block to substrate that is usable. All I need to do is pour water. Remember I said that the way this was done was once the water is out, we compressed it by removing the water. So which means if I want to bring it back, I'll just add water. It becomes the last one. So I'm trying to pour more water so it's faster. Is it paused again? Go Green Farming Consort, please check, confirm it is not paused. So all I want to do is get this to open up. Is it still paused? Please confirm. Please confirm. So like I said, Whomever sends in their answers first is going to get all you need to do to send in your answer is do try it out first start with the getting the substrate secondly uh, get the tomato seed once you've done that anyone you do step by step tag me first to complete the process will get five of these from me for free you get five of these from me for free I will bear the cost of sending it to you wherever you are in the country. Wherever you are in the country. Okay. I'm waiting for it because if it doesn't soak enough water, you can't open it. Has to soak in enough water. So once you can see it, once it soaks enough water, what did you see? That's cocoa coin. That's from coconuts. You can see it's from coconut. You can see the fibers. So at this point, it has already been grinded out. It's already grinded out at this point already grinded out at this point I'll just do one for you to see that is supposed to end for eight usually this, what I have here is five kilogram this is five kilogram block a five kilogram block can fit 12 of these plastics. Each of these plastics is about two gallon in capacity, about two, no, four gallon in capacity. So four times 12 is 48 gallon block. That's what this is.
So that just gives you time to break down. So please, if you have questions, please, you can type in your question. How readily available is this cocoa peat? It is readily available. There are lots and lots of places you can get it. There are lots of places you can get it. The price varies depending on where you are buying from, but there are lots of places. You can get from Big Farm. Big Farm is in Ikeja. You can also check and Google them, B-I-C Farm, Big. You can get from Big Farm if you want cocoa peat. <clears throat> BIC farm, big. So you can get from big farm. That is one. You can get from, you can also talk with Gartner Callaway. Yes, you are doing the assignment, not today, but first to finish between now. Uh, you can get from Seedfort. Seedfort is in Ogun State. You can get from PS New Track also, yes. PS New Track is in Lagos State, Ikoyi. So there are many places you can get it. And the good thing is there are a lot of materials online that you can also uh, learn from. It's very important that um, in soilless farming that you read because you have to constantly read to know what is the latest thing. Then it is important you start small so that you can make all the mistakes you need to make to understand how it works properly. How much is the cube? The price of the cube varies from who you are buying from, from as little as two, five, three thousand to at most five thousand naira for five kilogram block but again i taught you already how to make it on your own how you can do it yourself okay any other question you are not seeing me because i'm looking at the phone to read whatever questions you might have so please ask your questions thanks to fire official who organized this Any other question, please? Okay, please ask your questions. I'm waiting for it to dissolve. You can see we are, it takes time to dissolve because it's totally a, it's a, um, it's well dehydrated. It's well dehydrated. So you can see it breaking out gradually. Breaking out gradually. Please ask your questions. You can see it's not soil. Okay, I should post some of the materials. Just put hydroponics. You can put hydroponics either by Angela Delaja. Angela Delaja is in Abuja. She's one of my guys in the business. Or just put hydroponics in Nigeria. There are lots of materials. Lots and lots of people have posted online. And the hydroponics family is one family that is... Uh, um, is one family that is always willing to share. Who produces the bucket? Okay, I have the bucket. I produce them from China. So, what's the assignment? I came in here late. Okay, the assignment is number one. Try and get any of the available substrates that we mentioned. Just get the substrate. Either cocoa koi, cocoa fiber, um, charcoal, rice hull, um, um, sawdust, whichever one you can get. You can, I post, you can check the previous video. I think it's online. I shared it how you would process it, that is number one. Number two is get tomato seed, process the tomato seed, that's when I say process, get the tomato seed, get them out of the tomato, rinse, I say don't use soap, just rinse. Once you have done that, dry the tomato seed, uh, dry, don't dry in the sun, then follow the process of planting as I previously explained, that is number two, then Either you plant them inside your substrate or you transplant them to your substrate or if you want to do it totally non-substrate based, whichever one. Once you have done that, 
uh, you are done with the assignment. So every stage you do, tag me, tag me. Once you are done with the three stages of assignment, first to finish, get three plastics. Sorry, not three plastics. Get five of these plastics. I will send you five for free. What kind of nutrient is required for this? You can use whichever kind of nutrient you like. If you are doing substrate based, any nutrient goes. If you are doing non-substrate based, as if you are using ordinary water, then you want to get something that is soluble in water. Something that is soluble in water. I didn't discuss so much of nutrient because this is the basic class. So I need you to understand and see it grow first. Then maybe in the future we'll organize another class for those only who have done it already and want to know nutrient. We can then have a private class for those people. I, no, you don't really need to. Uh, yes, you would have to grind not all the charcoal, some parts, so that it is able. The name of the place in Ikeja, Big Farm, Big, like Big Bio, B I C. B I C Farms. You can Google B I C Farms, you will see the address. First to finish, if you start today, if you start the assignment today being Saturday, Latest in two weeks, it should be done. You should have seen your plant already growing. Latest. If you buy your tomatoes today, do the air drying today, in less than two weeks, you are done. And I'm not saying plant until you harvest. I'm just saying do it. Let me be sure we carried out what we learned. Okay, I'll just a minute. Any other question? I'm waiting for this. Once this is ready, we'll plant. And you see how easy it is to plant. I'm trying to scratch it and normally you should give it time on its own to break out. So because I know we are all pressed for time. Let me see if there is a way I can place things. Can this be rebroadcast? Yes, I will rebroadcast it once I'm done. Yes, you can. And I would see if possible. I might see if I can put it on YouTube so that other people I will broadcast it definitely, Mr. Fertola, and I will see if I can put it on YouTube for people that might be interested in the future. So let me put this in the other water so we can use this first water. So all I need to do now is, <clears throat> you can see, is a regular normal bowl, okay, properly shaped. I say yes, you can grind the charcoal. Yes, you can grind the charcoal. So we have these. So I'm going to take some of my substrate. I don't have enough basin. I have to need to. Take note that I am not pressing, then whatever excess water is able to run out, is able to run out. There are other things we can use. We can use grow bags. 
You can contact Gartner Colorway for your grow bags. Trying to get as much as I can. Still trying to get as much substrate as I can. Okay. So I will take I don't know if that is clear what I'm doing. So I'm going to move this here. I want to do the planting so I want us to be able to see. Can this plant in plastic? Yes, it can hold the tomato roots very well. So I hope that is clear. So let's assume you have done the assignment and you already have your plant in place. All you need to do, so this is from your nursery, just open, put in, close, open, put in, close, open, Put in and close. And open, put in, close. And that is all about planting. You can see how easy it is. And to fix back on the system, let me look for another one to use to explain that. If you look at the bottom of the container, there are grooves that allows me to hang them on each other. So I will come to my planting system here. And fix. So planting is done. This substrate I am using this is just cocoa koi this is just cocoa koi so we are done with the class I hope we learned 18 or two um, any question please we agree the class was going to end by eight I'm sorry I've taken longer than eight so please ask your questions Please ask your questions. Okay. In the absence of any question, thank you for your time. And have a great weekend. Oh, can I use any? Yes, you can use any charcoal. You can use any charcoal. Remember, we are not doing growth to full maturity. I want us to test things out to have an idea of how it works so that we would realize that it is not rocket science. It is easy to use. It is ordinary cocoa koi. Uh, so, I'm asking what kind of cocoa koi am I using? 
I'm trying to walk towards where a cocoa coil was not properly processed. You can see it. You can see a cocoa coil that is not properly processed. You can see the uh, fibers, how they look. So if it is not properly processed, it will look like that. And if you look, you can see the yam plants growing. Can tomatoes be planted vertically like this? You don't want to put tomatoes too close unless you use trellis to push them out. Unless you use trellis to push them out. How long does harvest take uh, for which of the crops, please? Remember that harvest for crops, even in field, even if you are doing soy based, cannot be the same for everything. So you probably would help, need to be much more specific for which of the crops. For which of the crops, the crop determines how long harvest takes. Harvest is not the same thing for every crop. Any other question? HROF, please, what was your question? Please ask again. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I missed it. Yes, when you want to apply the nutrient, you only put nutrient in the topmost part. Remember, there are holes at the bottom. It will flow down to other area. How do I use rice hull? Sketch to Fashion Studio, please. What you will do is I'm going to share the video so that you would see it at the beginning. You will be able to get the answer hrof oscar what does it, i said the substrate this is just cocoa coin this is coconut shaft that was why i showed you that this is just coconut shaft that has been grinded there is nothing inside this is ordinary coconut shaft if you check the earlier when we started if you rewind and check earlier uh, in the section i talked about how we get it to this point there is nothing inside it it is just coconut shaft Yes, you can go green farming. You can. You can. But remember what I said about charcoal? That is not usually one of the best to use because it's going to keep competing for nutrients with your plants. You know, I did say that. It will keep competing with nutrients with your plants. So you might just want to use a little of it and more of others. If you ask uh, some of these horticulturists, who do flower vases and or they like to use a whole lot of charcoal they enjoy using a whole lot and lots of charcoal any other question please thank you sir thank you hrof so thank you for joining me have a great weekend how long does it take to harvest tomatoes after you plant one it depends on the variety of the tomatoes you are planting there are tomatoes that take 70 days. There are some that take 90 days. However, with soilless medium, the days are a little bit shorter compared to traditional soil planting. That's the big, basic difference. But it depends on the kind of tomatoes. If you are planting, for example, Akarashak, the India variety, it will take about 120 days. It will take about 120. It depends on the kind of tomatoes. That's why when I started, I said it's important you read or understand the characteristics of the plant you are using, the seed you are getting. It's very important. Okay, in the absence of any foot click support, thank you for joining us. HRF Oscar, Osek Mekbe Precious, everyone, HRF Oscar, Cynthia Munuike, Go Green Farming Consult, thank you so much, Fathola, thank you so much, Faye, thank you for organizing this. Uh, every other person, farm tour, thank you so much, ma. Aware, yeah, thank you so much. Have a great weekend.